You inherited a very large uh, industrial conglomerate, you could call it, maybe the largest industrial conglomerate, and then you began to reshape it, and you sold things that were part of GE's history. Yeah, so if, if you just go back, we were really a conglomerate. So we went from NBC to uh, uh, pet insurance, jet engines, plastics. We, we were kind of a classic conglomerate. And I think, you know, in our business, a little bit different than, uh, we're kind of in the permanent hold business, right? So at the end of the day, what I wanted to do was construct around the things that we really viewed as being our core competencies, as time goes on, where you can generate a good return, we, where we could build competitive advantage. We were the biggest provider of long-term care, of reinsurance. I looked at those and said, these are, you know, A, I don't like the industries they're in, B, we're not very good at it, and, and we run it the wrong way. Right. Let's go. You know, so I started chopping away. GE appliances, so was that hard to sell? So again, I, I always feel like it's good if you're your own activist, and it's always good if you ask yourself the question, uh, do we run this business better than anybody else, or could somebody run it better than we could? In the case of appliances, uh, it was a classic capital allocation because we weren't going to globalize the platform. We, we, didn't, we didn't want to spend the money to be big in China. We didn't want to spend the money to be big in Africa. I worked in appliances. I, I wouldn't have been CEO if I hadn't spent four years in the appliance business. So I had, I had great affection, and I, and I loved the brand. So I had great affection for it. But we were just chopping wood. You know, we, we, weren't, we weren't on a path to greatness. And we could take that capital and put it on our energy business, our aviation right. business. What about NBC Universal? Um, your predecessor bought that business, and um, it was profitable. And didn't you like hang, hanging out with TV stars and movie stars? And yeah. you didn't like that? So uh, good, good industry, good team. Uh, and, and we generated a good return for the company in the time we had it. But here was my value added with NBC. Make better shows. So just tell Could them to you, make better shows. <laughs> you, make, you know, As a company, we weren't adding a lot of value. Number one. Number two. Uh, you could see the industry was going through this kind of change. So we, we, we always did, as a board, strategic yeah. reviews of NBC. I think one of our theories of the case in 2010 when we sold it that really is true today was we believe that this, the ability to really preserve pricing power can only be captured by those people that both own the pipes and the content. And we had no interest in, in owning the pipes, right? So, and, and three, I would say, uh, Unless you're in an existential way willing to go into uh, digital delivery, you're going to get Trump. Now, the one other point I'd make, David, is one I miss completely is the theme park business. A new ride, The Mummy, cost $100 million. You said, how can one ride cost $100 million? I missed it completely. It turned out to be the, maybe the only business in media that has sustainable competitive advantage is the theme park business. Oh. <laughs> because it takes capital, you could build a good spirit in the people and things like that. That was the one I got wrong. But when you go to Universal Parks now, you can get in free or still or? Uh, <laughs> you know, maybe so, so uh, uh, when we bought it, I called the guy that ran it, a guy named Tom Williams, great executive, and I said, let's just do a walking tour Universal. I want to see how it works. We get to the mummy ride. This is 2003. He said, you want to ride on the mummy ride? I said, yeah, that'd be great. So we go up. There's a three-hour line. They put me, I break in the line. I'm in uh, the first seat. They don't let anybody sit with me. And I'm saying, oh, my God, I am jerk of the year. <laughs> you know, I've just been voted the permanent jerk of the year, right?